everything and let's go. Okay, so um, I'll start with the agenda directly. So the first thing I wanted to discuss today was the interactive testing I did for the redundant fetch fix and the modification uh, for which which for which I had a discussion with Mark. Uh, so the first thing is interactive testing. I shared the plan with you guys uh, yesterday. So I took some scenarios I thought would affect um, would affect the results of removing uh, the second fetch. The first one was with advanced clone behavior because of course we're uh, cloning. We're do this is directly related to the fetch uh, git fetch. So the first was was to see if uh, fetch enabling or disabling fetch tags would uh, directly result in any kind of difference uh, in the information we have for the repository. And uh, so I, apart from looking at the result, I also looked at the code and I was uh, looking at how the second fetch is handling uh, these same behaviors. Because if there was a difference in behavior, then there would be a chance then the results would be uh, affected by removing the second fetch. That is what we saw with uh, with one of the uh, one of the issues Mark uh, caught, which was that some of the references uh, were not being handled by the first clone API, but were actually handled by the second um, fetch we were uh, performing. So with fetch tags, uh, the second fetch is also doing the same thing as the first fetch is. So there is no difference when if we disable them. Uh, the first first if we enable them the first fetch, the first fetch will bring all the tags if we disable them there will be no difference uh, the second one i was uh, interested in was the shallow clone uh, first with no depth provided i was uh, i wanted to see if by default the second uh, the second fetch is it providing some depth by default and the first is not doing that so that there might be a difference in the commit history so so when i when i compared the code i could see that the clone api basically uh, it shares the same implementation for um, sh doing a shadow clone so they both if if i don't provide any depth they uh, with a, they have a by default depth one uh, level for doing shallow clones so there is no difference if i so the behavior will be same if i remove if i remove the second fetch the first fetch will take care of uh, performing a shallow clone with depth equals to one uh, then this third test was with shallow clone with depth two i think it was uh, it didn't i think it's the same thing it doesn't it won't make any difference uh, in the results then timeout was kind of just i just wanted to see if there would be I, I i was sure that timeout would not make a difference because both of them again they implement the same fun, uh, git clone api is also uh, is, is doing what the second git fetch the functions it uses it's the same functionality so there is also no difference in case of timeout then uh, 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 why, uh Rishab, so uh, yeah, what does so, that uh, this timeout specify exactly so basically, time, what it specifies is if uh, if you're cloning a repository, if it if it takes more than five minutes, it's going to uh, it's going to abrupt abruptly cancel the build. That's what happens in the mark, right? Yes. Okay. So okay. that is timeout. By default, it's ten minutes for an for an for an operation. Okay. okay. For a git clone operation. Yes. Uh, the second scenario was with wipe workspace and force clone. So. Uh, this I, I I just tried because I wanted to see because it's it's cleaning the repository and forcing a reclone. So I wanted to see if that would somehow change anything. Uh, so I enabled wipe workspace and I tried mm, I tried I, I compared the results of without the fix and with the fix and I could not see any difference uh, in the repository information we had. Then it was for checkout for a specific branch, and I realized. So this is this is the third scenario, and I realized that it has basically no. It, it's something we do after um, the this step of which involves uh, these double fetches. Uh, so it's it's in a function called retrieve changes. It uh, checkout is a stage which is uh, which comes at a later part of the code. So. Um, 
then there's this uh, interesting behavior I found out, which is not user visible. It's called Git SEM source defaults. Uh, as far as I could understand, it's it's basically done to uh, it's done to uh, as I was reading and let me recall it's uh, it's done to go to the default revert to the default behavior that is uh, enabling on a ref spec and um, the second thing was I don't remember exactly so I was not sure if this would make any difference I, I tried it it did not but uh, since it was doing it was it involved honoring ref spec I just wanted to check if uh, this behavior would uh, although I could not understand how is this uh, behavior being called I, I did not uh, go too much in deep how uh, this behavior was working I just wanted to test how uh, this is working and then pre build merge I, I wanted to ask Mark and Fran and everyone, you guys, if, if, the, if it would make any difference. I actually I would, did not try this scenario. I would not expect to make any difference, but it's an interesting question because pre-build merge requires two branches at least inside the workspace, right? There's got to be a source okay. branch and a destination branch. But that you've got to have that one way or the other, whether it's from a wide ref spec initially yeah. or from an honor ref spec and you declare both branches so i think i think it is is un, un, un affected by this okay so uh, i haven't tested it so I, I i think i should test it still i so, i would given yeah. what you've done so far i would even propose skip that safely okay. don't worry about it let's trust that it's 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 it is not going to affect this okay so um, after doing these interactive tests, uh, there was one interesting problem which uh, Mark, uh, he pointed out. And that problem was that uh, with ref specs, while, uh, while we're fetching the ref specs, so we have uh, multiple kinds of references. Uh, ref, ref specs are basically mappings for the re references between a remote repository and the local repository. So, uh, so the, conven the ref specs, which the first fetch handles, uh, they are uh, they are related to the references of branches that is refs heads any any related branch or star which brings all the branches now if there is a case when we want to check out for a particular pull request which is a feature specific to github or maybe something some other kind of a reference uh, for gitlab the first fetch will not handle that if we are not honoring the uh, the ref spec for the initial clone if the user is not choosing that option uh, those fetches will those references will be missed by the fix i have uh, proposed and um, so so that so this is a huge issue for for us to move on with this fix because uh, that would bring direct failures and uh, many use cases will be broken so so i had a discussion with mark on how we could safely uh, retain the fix and modify the code so that we can um, we cannot break any use existing use case and we still do not have to call the second fetch although the current modification i have tried there are cases where i would have to call the second fetch call to not break any use case so right now would you guys like me to go through the fix the modification i tried and then the interactive testing i tried upon the, upon that modification to see the cases which mark uh, mark pointed out uh, for which the code was breaking uh, the use cases i tried those cases and now it's working with them so would you should i explain and go through that code or would you guys review that uh, from the pr and that's a we shouldn't use this time on discussion of that code so i'm i'm open to either i will have to re review the code either way so uh, let's look to the to omkar and to justin and to fran what's your preference do you want to skip detailed code review in this session and go on to other topics because you've got several other topics we need to address rishab right this is this yes. is not the only topic for our session today. Agreed, agreed. So that is why I just wanted to ask. So uh, was that yeah, is that pair good. already raised? The one you mentioned is is it talking of that? Yes, yes. It's it's a comment on the latest PR. Uh, I'll I'll share that PR on the GitHub 
Sharp I think sharp. it's 904, if I remember right. Yeah. I'm, I'm becoming very aware of exact PR numbers for your work, Rishabh. <laughs> 845, 904. Is it because of the multiple bills? Oh, no, it's because it's very important. I'm, I'm very interested. <laughs> okay, Mark. So, um, yeah, Justin, Fran, and Omkar, would you like to discuss it or should we move forward? I think we can continue. Yeah, I think it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the second, uh, the second agenda is related to the performance benchmarks and benchmarking in general. I was very uh, benchmarking has been surprising and irritating at the same time for me right now. So what has happened? Just the first of all, what I uh, one of the important things I have to discuss is that I was profiling uh, the Jenkins instance. With with whatever changes I did with the fix and without the fix, uh, with Java Flight Recorder. So uh, using that profiler, what what I was experiencing experiencing with consecutive builds was some kind of issue. I could not find out what the issue was, but there were there were huge time differences between the Git fetch calls uh, between uh, some repositories, which was which was what I showed in the platform sig meeting, and which was wrong. Uh, so then, and it also took a lot of time for me to change the repositories and then again, run the instance fixes. It was taking a lot of time and I wanted to do it with a lot of repositories to actually see how are we, uh, doing with the redundant fetch, what kind of performance overhead would be reduced if we are uh, allowing that fetch. So I shifted to, uh, so I shifted my strategy to use a performance ben a GMH benchmark uh, because I would have to just write a benchmark. I will, uh, I will have parameters where I'll directly put a lot of, uh, put multiple repositories and I, and then I don't have to do anything. I just have to wait for the results. And also uh, theoretically benchmark is the, uh, I think uh, to understand the root cause, if you have to do a root cause analysis, it's the best thing. One of the best things to do is what I thought. So, um, so I tried a bench. So I've written two benchmarks related to the redundant uh, fetch and I'd like to show you the results and the benchmark. So uh, the first benchmark is, so, so I've raised a PR for uh, the redundant benchmark as well. I've also written another uh, benchmark. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you uh, that benchmark first. So with this benchmark, what we're doing is we, uh, so I've written two benchmarks here. The first one is going to use the initial clone. So it's going to initially, uh, so it's going to cl uh, clone a repository and uh, we're going to see what kind of time it takes to uh, clone the repository uh, for the first time. Then in the second benchmark, so it, this, so the first benchmark acts as a baseline uh, uh, experiment that we can compare when we actually add the second operation, that is the second fetch call, how much time difference are we uh, gaining because of that. Uh, so the second benchmark is basically, again, the first thing, the initial clone, and then again, a fetch, um, a fetch operation. One thing I realized while writing the benchmarks was that I was not doing any kind of validation to check if these operations are actually doing what they should do. And I, what motivated me to do that was that some of my benchmarks were giving me results, which I could not understand completely. I was like, I don't, I don't know how to write a benchmark either, or is this, I am not able to understand. Uh, so, so what the initial validation I've, I've put here is that, uh, once I, the, the first thing I would we do with the benchmarks is that we clone the benchmark from an up, upstream, uh, source repository to a local place for the instance of the benchmark. So that is the first thing we do. So at that time, I record the size of the uh, repository we have when we're doing that. And then when I'm using the benchmarks and I'm actually uh, cloning them from that local upstream, local uh, repository I have, local Git repository. So I once I, I do the fetch, I, I compare the sizes and I see that actually this operation has taken place and the time is not just uh, because uh, it's actually not doing what it's supposed to and I'm, I'm getting time differences and analyzing them and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm inferring uh, some observations from that and those times are not even, uh, those operations are not doing what they should. So this is the first validation I, was, I have put here, but I, I am thinking of putting more validations to actually see if the operations I'm trying to benchmark are working or not and the times are real or not. So, 
So with this benchmark, the results I have is uh, yes. So the results I have, I, I'll explain what we're seeing here is. So these are the, the two benchmarks. The first benchmark is here with the initial clone. This is with the uh, double fetch calls. Uh, so this is the second benchmark. This is the first benchmark. With the first benchmarks, the color grading, it basically means is that, so we have Git and JGit, two implementations. I'm actually also testing that as well to see how both of the implementations work. So um, the two bars here, these represent, uh, so I took two repositories. The first is the Jenkins repository and the second is the Ruby repository. And uh, why I took those two repositories, let me just show you quickly the reason. The Jenkins repository, uh, the, the number of commits 30,000, branches 31. With the Ruby repositories, I have 61,000 commits. It's basically double. So I wanted, so uh, one more thing I'll, I'll discuss after this, what I'm explaining is that I'm not able to find constant size repositories or something near that when I'm actually looking for real uh, repositories. So with the Jenkins one, this was the closest thing I could find. This is 366 MB and this is 471. There's a good 100 MB difference. But this was, uh, I, I thought maybe I could get something out of this because the, the commit size is increasing. Uh, the double, it's double. With the branches, it's not, it's actually, let's not see the branches here first. Let's see if there's actually any <laughs> difference because of the commit. So the results here we see is for the for those two repositories, Jenkins uh, repository and Ruby repository. The first one is the Jenkins repository with the Git implementation. The second bar is uh, the, uh, the Ruby repository with the Git implementation. Then the next the lighter blue color bar you see and the gray color bar you see are both of the repositories with JGit. And this is for the first benchmark. And then the same thing for the second benchmark. So if we see the results, technically, uh, real life performance, there is theoretically from these benchmarks, if I could infer, there is no difference, no tangible difference between, the, <laughs> between uh, a single fetch and adding a second fetch on that same repository. Uh, and as you can see, the first benchmark, 11 seconds per operation, with the second, uh, with Jenkins, it's again 11 seconds. There was some difference. It was uh, some microsecond difference, a millisecond, sorry, not much. Uh, so we're, so I took the time unit for seconds this time because I actually wanted to see real life differences, how much would uh, we have when we are removing, when we are actually adding the second fetch. So, uh, and uh, the only difference, the only difference I could see was with the, um, the last one that is with JGit and with Ruby, there was one second difference between uh, the both of the benchmarks, which is kind of. So annoying. you're you're confident that the that it was really using JGit as the implementation. Those are so so similar to each other. It seems like they're either both using, they could either both using CLI Git or both. That's, that's fascinating. I, I can't explain what you're seeing. That, that's, that's really interesting. So I have another test uh, for the redundant fetch benchmark, which will and, maybe, yeah. And you, you, did, you looked at the logs and you saw that the logs were showing in both cases, or, or did you use some technique to confirm that, yes, I really am using JGit for this, for this one, I really am using CLI Git for this other one. So I usually log. I have, I have, I usually print when I'm using with when I'm with the benchmarks. I print the implementation I'm using. That is how I'm sure that okay, this is how it's being calculated. And and since since this is looking a little uh, absurd, I I actually have a place where I ran these uh, benchmarks. I'll, I'll show you. Yes. Okay, so and this one, that one was clearly using command line git because it has the command line git markers in it. So oh, which one mark? What are you I just saw a screen that went by that had the clear logging from command line git. I don't know that it's at all related to what you're doing. Go ahead and show us the, the files that you were going to. Yes, so this is this is the run which happened. Uh the, the visualization you're seeing this, these are the results uh, in this form. So here you can see with the first benchmark, which is just the initial clone, Git, it's, it's giving us 11 seconds. And uh, with again Git, 
with the second benchmark which has two fetches it's giving 11.181 seconds so so this difference is very minute and um, this is not a good thing actually no that, but, but okay that supports the observation i had earlier when initially people told me this fetch is enormously expensive you have obviously found at least one case where the fetch is not enormously expensive that redundant okay. fetch that doesn't mean it's always free but at least it means you found one case where it is free and it's surprisingly low cost so interesting fascinating i wonder if so when you're when you reference the the repository on the local disk do you reference it by absolute path or do you reference it by file colon slash slash URL? File colon slash slash URL. Okay, because you may want to read the CLI Git documentation. I don't think they do the same optimizations for JGit, but CLI Git may do some things where they say, I know this is local. And remember that the person who started writing this was Linus. And therefore he thought very seriously about file systems. He says, if I know it's local, I'll just do hard links. Or I'll do symbolic links, or I'll do, you know, there are all sorts of things that he could do knowing, oh, this is local. I'll just I'll okay. just make take advantage of the fact that it's local. Okay, that type might because th with these benchmarks, we're assuming we what we're doing is we're fetching the repository from a local file system repository. So this is right. not a real use case, real life use case. That is so because with, with profiling, what I saw, I saw results not huge results but at least there were uh, there, there was a 10 second difference between so that the second fetch it, it it was costing around 10 seconds or maybe 8 seconds or 12 seconds at least that much so this was a little surprising well okay so yeah. so another argument here might be that in fact the network transfer time to do the incremental fetch is so important it may be maybe a, a dominant factor there and therefore we won't see it in this in this intentionally controlled environment good okay interesting yes and uh, one more observation i think which we've discussed already is that jgit with a larger size repository jgit is performing way worse than what cli git is doing right so, uh, i kind of have a question that why are we why do we give jgit as an option when we're seeing that I, I actually don't know why we use JGit. I seriously, I have never asked you that. But why are we using it when uh, when we see that for any uh, normal size repository, JGit is going to perform uh, worse than CLI Git? Yeah. Uh, so, so the the original the original dream many many years ago before I was uh, became a plugin maintainer was that JGit would be every bit as good as command line Git, and we would get better results by being by using a full native implementation. The reality about a year into using that implementation was we learned very painfully that JGit was not a complete implementation of CLI Git. And, and since, since that time, the, the evidence has proven it will probably never be a full implementation of CLI Git. The people who maintain JGit are very committed to it and they do great work for the things they need from it. But, but of course, they, they work on the things they need. And okay. so, so the, 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 now one, one use case where JGit is very, very helpful is if you have a platform where you can get Java, but you don't have a command line Git port, JGit will, will still work for you. Uh, so, okay. so in that case, it's interesting. For large repositories, it looks like we have clear evidence it's never interesting for you. Uh, the other danger with large repositories is it's using it's using Java virtual machine memory to do the clone. And, and therefore you have to worry about memory leaks inside or and or inadequate garbage collection, et cetera, inside the JGit implementation. Whereas with CLI Git, it's always a subprocess. The operating system will garbage collect it for you. So okay. so yes, your observation is is very wise that why use JGit for anything larger than larger than about 10 megabytes? Okay, uh, and uh, so the next benchmark I, I I have actually raised a PR for that. So this with this benchmark, what I'm doing is uh, I think I'll, I'll show the benchmark as well. So with this benchmark, uh, we have multiple repositories. It's it's from the Jenkins. Uh, these are Jenkins repositories, small plugins. 
I just incrementally increase the size and number of commits, number of branches to see what are we seeing there. And I was actually tired to find. So what? So the conclusion I came into was that either we we need to create repositories on our own where we have constant sizes but different number of commits. Omkar also suggested that. Um, but the issue with that I uh, I see is that we will never be able to simulate uh, what an actual repository is. For an example, right now I can compare two repositories where I have a thirty thousand uh, commit number of commits difference. I I, I think I, it'll be very difficult for us to see all of those um, kind of parameters. We set those parameters for repositories we create ourselves uh, while we are benchmarking, but but to have a clear sensitivity analysis where we directly want to find out how this parameter like the number of commits would affect the execution time for git fetch without freezing without uh, taking the size of the repository constant i am not sure how we will be able to confidently say that okay if we increase the number of commits this is how the execution time is going to change because the size with what i've seen the size always increases when the number of commits are increasing with what i've seen and i think that's kind of an obvious fact uh, and so so that is that is one of the issues with this strategy with both of the strategies i have so so with this the, this benchmark so I, I had some of the repository i had four repositories here and it's it's doing the same thing. It's actually not doing the same thing. Here's a difference. Um, the difference is that uh, with the earlier benchmark, I was actually cloning the repository for the first time uh, for, within the benchmark test. So I was uh, benchmarking the execution time for that operation as well. Here, the that operation is is taking place in the setup uh, before the benchmark. It's 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 happening before the benchmark. So ideally. It should not affect the time. So clearly, I should. What I should get is the execution time when I have the results. The execution time for the incremental fetch uh, is what I should get from this benchmark. And um, so what I got. So I, I'll just show the benchmark. This is the benchmark. It's incremental fetch. The Git client I'm using it. The 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 Git repository it's referencing. It should it should have already have. Uh, a, a git repository fetched from the local git repository i have so um so the results here we can see is is that with git so the colors you see is basically multiple repositories with git and then with jgit it's just one benchmark so we don't have a confusing result here uh, it's, it's, it's not that much confusing so so with git as we increase the rep repository size one positive result I can see is that the execution time is increasing for the, the cost of having an incremental fetch is increasing though the increase is in microseconds, uh, milliseconds, but it's an increase. And I'm sure as I increase the size, I take it to maybe much larger repositories, we'll have a change. But uh, what I have to do is after this, one of the most important thing is to map this, the theoretical or observations with practical observation and to do a practical observation what i've seen is that i can use a jfr profiling tool to see how for those repositories uh, what kind of uh, performance overhead i am uh, reducing while i'm uh, avoiding the second fetch with this we can see that okay uh, there is a change there is a difference there is an increase uh, when we increase the size of the repository the number of commits also increase, the number of branches increase, but I can never say for sure what is contributing the most for the git fetch right now, because since the size of the repository is increasing, I, I there's no way I can say that, okay, the commits is why this is happening. For, for that to happen, I need maybe two 500 MB repositories with one with having, there should be a clear difference in the uh, number of commits, possibly something like 20,000 commits in one and second might have 30,000 or 40,000 so that I can see, okay, for these constant size repositories, if the number of commits are increasing, this is how the execution time is increasing or de decreasing, or it is having no effect. So but that is, yeah, I, I thought, yes, I thought our intent here was trying to understand 
which thing should we include in the sizing heuristic? And isn't, isn't your observation here saying we should include both repository size on disk and number of commits because they seem to both show as they increase, we, we, the execution time increases. So do we already have enough information here to say, yeah, number of, number of commits in the repository and size of the repository on the disk are both relevant to, to performance. So we include them in the heuristic. Uh, yes, Mark, you're right. The ultimate aim for doing that is to uh, to find what performance, uh, how is the performance affected from what predictors. But what I'm saying is that uh, we're not able to test them independently, not as independent variables. They are, they are depend. I'm not sure is if the file, what is contributing more to the performance uh, changes in the Git fetch. Is it the file size? Uh, is it the size the uh, pack? the size of the pack dot pack object or is it is it the number of comments of course it would be the dot pack object most of the performance would be affected by the size only it's common as my common sense says not sure uh, technically but, i haven't looked deep into yes yes ma'am no no you go ahead and finish excuse my interrupting no no so my so the hypothesis i wanted to test was that if we have a repository with a large uh, history and uh, maybe not a considerable size, but a large history, would that affect the second fetch more? Because what I assumed with the second fetch was that the first fetch would download all the, would clone all the objects, the packed objects. The second fetch does not have to do that. What it should do is to, uh, is what I think I haven't checked. I haven't looked into, uh, I'm not, I'm confirmed this. But what it should do is to, iterate through the list of the commit history or basically it has to uh, get the incremental references or any changes in the repository the second fetch would want to do that and to do that it would go through the history and so my my hypothesis was that was that the, the redundant fetch would actually uh, have a, a considerable performance overhead if we have uh, repositories where the history and the branches they their uh, their larger the, the, then there are a, 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 a cons uh, I, I would say a considerable number is there for those repositories so that is something i wanted to test and i'm not i'm still not sure with these we're sure that with increasing the size and uh, all of those uh, the number of commits we're seeing that the, the the performance overhead of the second fetch is going to increase we're sure about that because we can see that with both of the benchmarks not with the second one, uh, first one too much but with this in in with a uh, this if we uh, microscope the time unit, we can see a clear difference. Uh, but I'm not sure independent variables how they're contributing to the um, performance. And also, again, we can see that JGit is actually performing better uh, for us for small size repositories. The, the thing we have the the observation we have that for a small size repository, JGit is going to perform better than Git. We were seeing that with this this benchmark as well that it's performing better. Though it's the difference is not much uh, in real time. Uh, I think we see the differences with la much larger repositories. JGit is not performing better. Uh, I'm not sure how much this would affect the performance for a user. Noticeable changes, but theoretically, it's JGit is performing better than Git for small size repositories. So yes, so with benchmarking strategy, I have, uh, so if, if, if our aim is, say if our aim is just to see that, uh, so we need to make an estimator and to make, make an estimator to estimate the size of the repository, what kind of uh, parameters we need to see. So the obvious one is the size of the, uh, the, the objects. Uh, the second, it's, it's safe to assume it's number of commits, number of branches. But how much, uh, how much independently they affect the performance is something I haven't not able to figure out right now. That's that's my uh, concern. Uh, yes. So any, um, yeah. So do you guys want to say? Yeah, I. Any, yeah. So. So I'm. I think you've 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 answered the question. Should we include size and number of commits? in in the in the the assessment absolutely and we've got you've got data here that says 
yes, JGit for small size repositories is marginally faster. So, so there's, there's another incentive to say, okay, we should now probably look at code and say, or start, put you into code and say, all right, how do we use this now to implement the heuristic or to implement the estimator, the size estimator and, and start seeing how do we get that into the code to allow people to the option to say, I want to use the fastest thing for my repository. Okay, that is what I thought as well that we could, so we have clear evidences that uh, some of the parameters, they how they are affecting. So we can um, start working with the estimator. And, uh, and I think uh, the next agenda, the thing I had on agenda was analysis on find so we have discussed this performance predictors for git fetch um, now the repository size estimator so i thought that i would write a class i could show a prototype on, on how we're going to do it the approach but i could not do that just more stuck with benchmarks and uh, the fix uh, but uh, i did research on the uh, heuristics we were talking about a little bit i saw the things we could do and um, so the first uh, option we had was uh, i think the first option we had was to use the easiest one to use github apis or the apis ex already exposed by uh, uh, these providers so with github what the problem i i've seen is that they give the size of the bare repository instead of the actual repository so so that might not be a clear indicator of the size of uh, for a repository. So I experimented that with VS code, Microsoft VS code. So I uh, cloned it and I, and I also, um, I, I uh, tried tested the API provided by GitHub to check so what was the size it was returning to me. So the size was around, uh, according to the GitHub API, it was around 300 MB, but when I cloned it, it was around 900 MB. So that's, that's a, that's a huge difference in sizes. So I, I checked around. So I found out that GitHub, uh, they uh, on the servers they have uh, repositories, uh, bare repositories. So they so they they give that size uh, as a result when we are trying to um, receive that information. Okay. And uh, yes, Mark. So on on when you say that the repository in your local copy was 900 meg, does that mean that the .git directory was 900 meg, or that the whole workspace? including the checkout copy was 900 meg. Oh, Rishab, I think we may have lost you. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, while Rishab gets ready to come back, I, I assume he will eventually reattach. For us as mentors, we've got an upcoming day arriving soon. Uh, oh, he's back, good. I'm sorry, it was an power, unscheduled power cut. So, yeah. So as I was, what were you saying, Mark? I uh, kind of missed it. So when you, when you, uh, when you say that the, the VS Code repository on your disk was 900 megabytes, is that just the contents of the .git directory or is that, that the entire checked out copy, not just the .git directory? So to, uh, to measure that, how do I measure the size of uh, when I'm cloning the repository? How do I do that? I basically, I, I, I think I have it there. So when I'm cloning it, it usually shows us downloading the objects. And so it, if you, if you, if you, um, I'll show that instead of explaining somewhere. Uh, I think we all are aware, so I think we can go ahead. Yes, so I'll, I'll show it here. So, um, take a little bit of time. So the amount of objects it's downloading, so it, it shows the size. So here I just, so this is what I consider the size of the repository when I'm cloning. Uh, if oh. you guys can see my yes. and I have no idea what that number represents. Okay. All right. So, so that number, I don't know what that represents. I, I usually look at the size, the du minus s output of for the dot get directory, because what that tells you is size on disk of the, 
of the the fundamentally what is almost the bare repository as represented on the other side. So I think I, I have to confirm that I haven't, con I, 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 I think I did check the uh, object, dot pack uh, object, which is downloaded by, uh, okay. by uh, Git clone. So I, I could see similar sizes from, from these, from this uh, thing and from, uh, from that uh, object. But I think I, I'll check that uh, mark first. Okay. To see if, if that is working. And uh, so, and with estimators, with the estimator class, uh, so right now the op one option Mark gave was, so great option is to, uh, so if we have a cache, cached uh, repository for, for the project, we could use that if, if it exists. So we, we do that currently in our code, right Mark? And, and if we want to, um, if, if, if that exists uh, already, uh, we could, that's the, it's the best way to estimate the size of the repository. Uh, so we could use that. I haven't explored uh, how, for, in what, for what lifetime that cache exists. Where would I find that cache? I assume it's, it's, it's on the, it's in the workspace, right? Uh, agent workspace. No, it's, it's in the master. Only in the master, actually. And, and. Okay. If you... So uh, Mark, if I, if it's in the master and uh, I have my workspace in agent, so either I, so what do I do? I reference it. Uh, okay, for one second, master agent, let's share the same HDFS. I'm, I'm actually not very they, they, sure how they, that's going to work. So, so the, 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 the execution of most of the logic is happening on the master for you. Therefore, you can ask questions of the cache on the master pretty directly. So okay. things, things like the, the, when the git SCM object is created, you can assume that's on the master and that SCM object then can, can look at the local cache and interrogate the local cache. So I, I don't think you have to, I, I think it'll be pretty okay. straightforward actually, if you just okay. use that, um, I, I don't even think you'll have to do a cache lock in all seriousness, because I think all you're trying to do is look at the file system. So you get the, get the ad, the directory of the cache. And then knowing the directory name, you go use file system calls to ask for the size of the contents of that directory. And that gives okay. you a, a relatively quick approximation of the size of that repository. Repository. Yeah. Okay. So I, I will explore that. Okay, then I think I'll write a prototype as fast as I can for the estimated class. Uh, so um, I think we've we've extended the we've unofficially unofficially extended this to one. Hour. Is that okay with everyone? I'm sorry that. Oh, I yeah. Not. For me, I trust that the mentors who can't be here will drop off. So so you, that that's we set it at thirty minutes and we'll, we'll we go as we can. Okay. So I did so want the, you to get yeah. to the, the, the demo work, the demo plan, because you've got a demo coming up. Is it next week or the following week? I think it's next, next week. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so I have to do a bunch of things. I, I saw the mail, so I have to publish a blog post before that. I think we should discuss what all should I put in the demo. And uh, so um, from my side, what I would like to show is first uh, the whole benchmarking strategy, how we're doing that, the code, and then the results. Um, what I would also like with benchmark, maybe one more operation so that it's maybe or, uh, like get LS remote. I was interested to see how that would work. Maybe I have some in interesting observation to show for get LS remote. So I, I, I want to expand the benchmarking strategy for those two operations. Um, that's the first thing we could show. The second thing would be the redundant fetch work, how we've done it. And, um, so I was thinking because of the demo, I, I would have to show what, I would have to show something uh, visually so I, as, a, as a feature or a, something in the user interface. And 
most of the things I have, it's usually code or weird results. So I'm actually not sure what what are your guys' ex- expectations? How is he? Are you the guys who will be my uh, who will be in the panel when your evaluation in the evaluations, or is it the uh, core committee of Jenkins? How so? Oh, we're, so yes, we're the, we're the evaluators. You, it's it's us. You've you've got all four of the evaluators online, and so I, yes. So I guess the sh- best. Yes, yes, Mark. Yes, sorry. I think I think if you show graphs and you, I don't think you have to show Jenkins UI as much as graphs and highlights of hey here's what we've learned as part of this exercise look at this look at this here's an improvement here here's an improvement here and people will be more impressed actually with with graphs and charts of performance performance comparisons than they ever would be with show them a Jenkins UI because we knew this was a performance performance project okay yes so that's a great relief because i was uh, as i was seeing other projects i was like i i don't have any kind of um, so i was seeing that they have their own plugins they have user interface changes yeah. and i i don't have all of that right so, um, yeah last year from my experience uh last year we had some other projects that were similar to this as well and uh it's it's not a big deal like uh if it's a plugin based Thing where you're actually building a new plugin, yeah, like you might get into demos of how that works and user experience and stuff like that. But yeah, like Mark said, I think I'd definitely focus on the meat of this project, and that'll people will like it. So. Hey, in a, in a perfect world, they, they will see nothing different. It'll just be faster, <laughs> right? Yes. So That's so so different. if you if you show, I'm going to show you nothing except it's faster. That, that that should already delight people. It's like, wow, that's great. Because usually it's it's faster and I had to break the following things in order to make it faster. Okay. So uh, so what I'm thinking is the first thing is the benchmarking strategy with uh, Kit Fetch, what I did and how I improved the benchmark on the Jenkins IO, how it's running and everything. Uh, one thing which is missing right now, which I haven't showed you guys is uh, integrating the JMH visualizer plugin on the Jenkins. Um, I have to do that. I haven't done that because that's, I think it's going to be a great uh, improvement because we'll be able to see visually how the uh, results are showing. So that's something I'm going to do. Uh, and I'm going to do it for Git LS remote as well. Uh, so for these two operations, the benchmarking strategy, then with the redundant fetch, I think uh, from the, the, the fix, the, would, would you guys be interested in seeing the testing scenarios and the cases we considered while uh, we were fixing this and the use cases we had to consider if we would break them or how to do this safely, the whole thing. Or is that something we don't have to discuss? We have to discuss the fix and then the uh, benchmark, which would show that this fix is uh, showing some improvement, ideally. Yeah, so for me, I'd keep the, the testing in your back pocket in case somebody asks, hey, how did you check this? I, I suspect the audience will be... I'm, I'm gravely concerned about not breaking compatibility, right? That's a big deal for me. But the audience, the larger audience, probably will just assume that, think, of course, no one's going to break compatibility. And so they'll be more interested in your results with numbers and with the, the performance results and your observations on, hey, here are the characteristics we saw. Okay. So uh, with benchmarks, as we've seen that the theoretical results are not showing much of a difference. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I want to say, uh, what with the, the redundant fetch, the results I would like to show is the profiling results uh, as much as I can so that I have a large sample and the result is results are not uh, something which we do not expect. And, well, um, I think yes. it's okay to show the, uh, show the surprises as well and say, welcome to the real world. Sometimes we get surprised by how software behaves. Okay, I, okay. I feel no shame in declaring that we were, we, I was, that you were completely surprised to see this result comparing to this other result and that more investigation is needed. That's, that's perfectly okay. Okay, so, um, so the, the benchmark results and the profiling results, both of them for the Git and Fetch issue, and then uh, I think the third thing would be um, the third thing would be uh, the estimator class. If I'm able to uh, create that with some heuristics, uh, which we've thought about, and uh, 
So I, I need to first consolidate the approaches we can take uh, and uh, if it's even possible with the way we want to do it because I'm right now not too much sure. Because with the APIs, um, I was actually seeing something which I discussed the difference in the size because of bear and the objects. I have to confirm that with the cache thing. So if the cache doesn't work, then what we do because with the cache it's i think if we have the cache then it's 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 simple to estimate the size but if we don't have that then it's it's the real work where we would have to understand how what's the uh, how we could um, estimate the size i was hoping that number of commits and branches would have a great uh, so if we could get the number of branches we could get the number of commits and we even if we don't have the size of the objects we might be able to make the decision but with the with the experiments I've done, I was not able. I'm not able to find out independently how these fact, these uh, 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 these factors how they contribute to the performance. So maybe I'll I'll try to uh, I'll try with some more experiments if I'm able to isolate that. So I think I already have a lot to. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And one other thing that you could maybe try, um, if you yes, wanted yes. to. Like if we wanted to rule out the disk things, like the Linus thing that Mark was talking about, uh, you could maybe set up like a, a Bitbucket or GitLab server on your local network, put these repos on there, and then that would like get you to like, maybe Git's not gonna optimize for being on the file system. Uh, okay. That's a possibility as a, that's an optional possibility. But well, and, and that... Rishab, I have an environment that we could use to simulate exactly what Justin described. I have a local okay. Git server on my network that that happens to be just full of all sorts of interestingly sized repositories. So, so Justin's idea is good. However, even before that, I would take one more. I think you've learned something in this extra. You you've gained a crucial piece of knowledge that I don't think you highlighted nearly enough as you're in your summary. It is that there is a performance curve, there's a performance result for Git, command line Git, and there's a performance curve for JGit, and there's an intersection between those two curves that is dependent on repository size factors. And, and that is something, truthfully, before you did this project, we did not know that. I had not, I had an assumption, but I had no data to support that. And what you have is you have hard data which says, as these attributes of the repository increase, the, char the characteristic performance of Git is like this and JGit is like this. Mm, and yes. that curve, if that curve is your opening slide even for me, that would be great because it says, oh, uh-oh, everybody should be aware of this characteristic of the JGit implementation. Okay, go, go, you, you've done go. you've done concrete measurements, and the measurements keep showing over and over again this exact same story that with large repositories, JGit is a poor choice, yeah. and and so people should be aware of that. You've you've already contributed to the body of knowledge just with that 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 initial graph. Okay, so okay, I'll I'll make sure that I so I, I did not highlight it this time because I thought that we've already we've had discussions and we've had benchmarks which show these results. That is why I, I wanted, I did not highlight it as much. So, um, so this is what I was saying I'll show in the evaluations and uh, apart from the plan, also what I have to do is I need to write a blog post uh, where uh, I'll probably show the results to the thing you just described and I'll show that and I'll uh, show the benchmarks and uh, I would also have to make a presentation. So. Would you guys like to be a part of uh, how I'm making the presentation or is it something uh, I'll, I'll just make and I'll show it's you guys are not involved in it. So I propose that we that you show us a, your initial framework of the presentation on Friday if you would be willing. So okay, that so that we have a chance to give you feedback. For instance, it asked for a blog post and I thought, you know what, the performance results you've seen would be a great blog post that say, look, yeah. Just for the information of Jenkins users, without any code change, you should be aware that if you choose JGit and your repository size is larger than such, you are sacrificing performance intentionally. Okay, okay, so so I'm going to do that, and with the presentation, okay, so I'll I'll show you um, show you guys uh, something on Friday. 
presentation, sample presentation. Uh, just yeah. to, to highlight, we use JGit as the implementation on ci.jenkins.io. And that's fine for small repositories, but remember that the documentation repository and the Jenkins core repository are both well beyond the threshold size that you've identified. So I already have an improvement to make in ci.jenkins.io to get it to get some performance back. Okay, yeah. So, um, okay, so I think uh, this is. This is it. I think this is what I wanted to discuss. With the blog post, I wanted to ask: Do I have to do that on uh, Jenkins.io, or uh, can I do it as? Is, oh, it's it's mandatory to do it with Jenkins.io. I thought I was setting up a GitHub page uh, blog, and I was thinking that I could do it there. You you are uh, welcome to start it there, but ultimately, I will expect it be a Jenkins.io blog post. I, I, I don't know about the others, so but what's that? It'll get you some visibility to having it on the Jenkins.io. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It'll be good. <laughs> I'll add it to the Jenkins I page. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so the evaluation starts yeah. from June twenty-ninth. Yeah. Yes, Justin. Yeah, and plus one for like demoing your, demoing your demo. Uh, that was a good way for us to get feedback uh, before, and then uh, one thing that we did before too, which is up to you. Uh, I think we had done it in Google Slides. Doesn't matter like what technology you use, but if you want to share that with us too, like we can do markup and comments for if you want feedback on things too. Okay. So up to you on what you use. You don't have to use Google Slides necessarily. But, but I, I like use that because it will be collaborative. The work can be collaborative then. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think that's it. Thank you guys for spending. Uh, much more time than allocated for the meeting. Thank and, you, uh, Rishab. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. I'll post the recording. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. We'll talk to you <laughs> Friday, Rishab. Yes. <laughs>